بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Respected brothers, elders, sisters, Islam alaykum wa rahmatullah I thought today we will speak about something which was once upon a time primarily the duty of the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam but because after the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam there is no other Nabi to come so we to a degree or to a great degree have the responsibility and this is also very intrinsic to this Ummah being great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran regarding this Ummah Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas You are the best of nations You have a responsibility Allah says that ukhrijat linnas that humanity must see your good not just the Muslims but nas humanity must see your good and to for humanity to see your good you must do two things you must enjoin good and you must forbid evil and this is the responsibility which has been placed on the shoulders of this Ummah. For this Ummah forever, if this Ummah ever wants to be regarded as a Khayr Ummah in the eyes and in the scales of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to do these two good, two things. Enjoin good and forbid evil. When you see an evil, it is incumbent according to your capacity to endeavor to remove that it is an obligation upon this ummah to enjoin good to tell people to do good things the prophet sallallahu spoke about bani israel the israelite the bani israel the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the Bani Israel, their ulama and their people would see somebody doing something wrong and what they would say to that person who was doing the wrong thing is that stop doing this thing, fear Allah. The next day, they would go past the very same individual and the very same individual was doing exactly what he was doing yesterday and the next day they wouldn't bother in joining good and forbidding evil and they would sit with that person they would drink with that person until Allah sent his lamnat upon them that they saw it first day they saw the evil and they thought okay let's say something but come the next day Come the third day, couldn't be bothered. And this is why the ulama take from this narration that it is not your obligation to give a person dawah once. It is not your obligation just to say one time, stop this. But it is your obligation to enjoin the good again and again, to forbid the evil again and again. The simple reason for this is that if you don't enjoin good and you don't forbid evil, then sooner or later that evil will seep into your homes that evil will affect all those around you and this is why we see in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was always enjoining good look how many times he went to abu jahl to give him dawah toward allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look how many times he went to the mushrikeen Look how much hardship that he went through. And the, and the concept of enjoying the good and forbidding evil is not an easy one. When you tell people to do the right thing, 
you will get a group of people who will be your detractors. You know, they will have many things to say about you. So who does he think he is? Why is he telling us to do this? But because it is an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoin good and we forbid evil. And we start really with ourselves. Allah says, Do you command other people with good but you forget yourself? So we start with ourselves. That we pray our salah, we do good things, we give sadaqah in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then secondly, we move on to our families. Allah says, save yourself and then your families. Why does Allah say save your families second? Because by naturally, naturally, we love our families. And the people that you love the most, you care about the most. Therefore, if you are praying Salah, but you are never telling your children to pray Salah, there is a serious problem. If you are never telling your wife, your husband to pray Salah, there is a problem. Now you may do it with Hikmah, you do it with love, you do it with Muhabba, but you do it. You do it. If you are going to for the salah and your children are sitting there and you never tell your children, come on, let's go for salah. Come on, go, go with me, pray with me, or at least pray at home. Then you are failing in your responsibility to your children. Because it is an obligation. You, you, kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun ra'yati. Each one of you is a shepherd. And each one of you will be asked regarding his flock. You are failing in your responsibility because Allah gave you that responsibility. The Prophet said, Man min kun munkaran fal biyadihi. If any of you sees an evil, then you should change that evil with your hands. Who is this for? So you see a guy on the street having a spliff or having a cigarette, and you walk up to the guy and say, and you take the cigarette out of your ha his hands. You know what's going to happen. No, this is for people of authority. This is of people who have other people underneath them. This is for the ruler. This is for the parents. This is for the elder brother, elder sister. That when she sees something within the family, that they change it with their hands. And if the message of Allah said, فَإِلَّمْ تَسْتَتِي If you are not able to, if you are not able to do with your hands, then with your tongues. And if you are not able to do it with your tongues, you're weak, you don't have the power, then at least you should regard the evil within your heart. And if you don't regard it as evil in your heart, the message of Allah says, ذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. This is the lowest form of Iman. There is nothing underneath this that you see an evil. You see an evil and you don't regard it as evil. You don't regard it as bad. And look, subhanAllah, how many of us in our homes, we see evils. We see our grown children never praying Salah. We see our grown children never ever reading Quran. Never, don't know the basics of the deen. We see our own wives, our own husbands, people that we love. But we never enjoin, say, come on, pray your salah, it's salah time. Give sadaqah. We see injustices. We see injustices in our homes. Clear injustices. We see these injustices for decades, but we never say this is an injustice. You see your brother, you see your sister abusing her spouse. You see your mother, your father abusing the daughter-in-law, the son-in-law. And never, never did you ever say, in, with respect, with love, 
Mum, how are you treating this girl, your daughter-in-law? Would you like somebody to treat your daughter in that same way? Never! The Messenger of Allah said, Afdul Jihad, Kalimatu Haq in the Sultan in Jahir. The greatest form of jihad, the greatest form of jihad is to speak words of truth in front of a tyrannical ruler. You know why? Because in the old days, when you spoke in front of a tyrannical ruler, it would be game over. You wouldn't see tomorrow. But the Messenger of Allah defined it as not jihad, afdul jihad. No jihad greater than this. That you have a tyrannical ruler and you will speak the truth. Nobody's telling you to speak about a tyrannical ruler. But what about your own homes? What about injustices in your own homes? In the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a camel which bolted away. So they came and informed the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a camel which belonged to this young man from the Ansar and it's run away. So the Messenger of Allah said, where is the camel? They said, oh Messenger of Allah, it's in this garden, but be careful because it will attack you. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the garden. The narrations mention that the camel saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they walked up to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Messenger of Allah didn't move. And it placed his head on the shoulder of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a tear came out of the camel's eye. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Who will, does this camel belong to? And the young man said, Me, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger of Allah said, It complained that you overwork it. You overwork it and you underfeed it. He said, take care of the camel. The Messenger of Allah spoke, Amal bil ma'roof enjoined good, wa nahi anil munkar, for the right of animals. And you and I see injustices in our homes, in front of our eyes, every single day. And we never say a word. Oh no, I can't say anything. It's blood. Blood is thicker than water. Allah says in the Quran, Oh, you will believe. Stand firm for justice. Walaw ala anfusikum. Forget about blood. Allah says, Speak the truth, even if it's against your own self. That's what Allah requires. And this is why we are an ummah that we enjoin good. You look at the problems, honestly, within our community. Nobody ever speaks up. Your, your areas are run down. And bichare, your children, have to face the consequences because you never enjoin good. You never forbid evil. You don't care a damn about your community. Anybody can say anything about you. You won't ever speak up. Look at your areas. Look at your areas. You know, when the COVID was happening, I went to B&Q. And it was really an eye-opener for me. So I was standing in the queue in B&Q. And there's a, an Englishman standing behind me. And another two Asians standing behind him. So what happens is that this guy who's walking with a walking stick, he comes in and there's an Asian guy who's actually later on not even a Muslim. He says to him, you can go through. So the Asian guy who let him go through went away. He worked at B&Q. So there's a white lady standing there. So this guy behind me says, he goes, oh, he wouldn't let him in if he was white. Now there's me standing in front of him. There's two Asians, guys standing behind him. So I turned around to him and I said, how do you know that? I said, how do you know that? He goes, well, you know, that's my opinion, isn't it? I goes, but you have no basis for that opinion. I said, that, you said that based on the color of his skin. So that's textbook racism. He goes, well, it's my opinion. And then we had a couple of, you know, nice exchanges. 
No, but what really, what, like, what really dawned upon me then, and I knew this, was that this guy had the gall, two things, that this guy had the gall to say what he said, although he knew that there was an Asian guy standing in front of him, two Asian guys standing in behind him, because he knew that there was no repercussions. He knew that these guys ain't going to say that. Literally, I can guarantee you, if I was Afro-Caribbean, if I was black, if standing in front of him and two behind him, he wouldn't have said it. And the second thing really struck me was that this guy was brave enough to say what he said and he actually had no defense of what he said. I thought, okay, they'd have some response. The best he could say, well, it's my opinion, isn't it? It's a free country, I can give my opinion. But see, this is the general mentality, unfortunately, that we will never ever speak up. And I'm not saying that we're just going to get into a ruckus or rumble with everybody who says something. But yeah, you have no self-izzat. You have no self-respect. And if you have no self-respect, then nobody out there is going to have any self-respect for you. And this is the, uh, this is the thing. Look at, your, look at our areas. Why is it the fact that people, people throw rubbish in our areas People low mess, and nobody says a word because you are only concerned about what is in front of your personal home. It doesn't matter that every single day your children have to go past rubbish tips on the corner of your street. That's what your children grow up with. And our deen, I don't know what lie any other text out there where uh, their prophet said, I went into Jannah. I went into Jannah last night. And I saw a man rejoicing in Jannah. And I asked, why is this man in Jannah? They said, this man is in Jannah. Because there was a branch in the middle of the street. And he picked up the branch and he moved it away. Allah loved this concern for his community so much. Allah granted him Jannah. I know no other text. But we are so far away from this. You have people smoking spliff in our areas. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It's not your baby. His father should look after him. It's the council's problem. It's the police's problem. And tomorrow, then they'll start dealing in your corners, street corners. It's still not your problem. It's the police's problem. It's the council's problem. But the day that spliff comes into your head, into your house, the day that your children become crackheads, then it will become your problem. Why? Because simply, you did no amal bil maruf wa nahiyan in munkar. You never enjoyed good. You never, you know, you never thought, look, why is this happening in our areas? And then, 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 this is the beautiful thing about it. Then you'll turn around and say, Yar, these Molvis are the problems. Every gathering, Molvis, Molvis, Molvis. The Molvis are the ones that are speaking about it. Your councillors, your MPs do jack. And then you'll define yourself as we are the educated elite. We are the cooth ones. We are the refined ones. And these take place in our communities and nothing ever is done. And if you don't deal with the evil, it will enter your home sooner or later. The Prophet ﷺ gave the example about a group of people who were on the top of the ship and another group were at the bottom of the ship. So the people at the bottom had to go upstairs to the deck, then go and fetch the water. So they got a bit tired of this and they thought, you know, we have to go upstairs to the deck. And also we have to inconvenience those who are on the top deck easier. That what we do is that we make holes in the bottom. We make holes in the bottom so we can take water directly. The Messenger of Allah said, if those on the top do not stop those at the bottom, 
then both groups will drown. The Prophet وسلم, was asked once, he said, O Messenger of Allah, Abu Dhar asked him, O Messenger of Allah, what is the best action? What is the best action I can do? The Messenger of Allah said, believe in Allah. He said, then what after that? He said, spend from the wealth that you have on others. Help assist others. Listen to this very carefully. Assist others. He said, then what? But if I'm poor, if I'm fakir and I don't have wealth, then what? He said, enjoin good and forbid evil. Enjoin good and forbid evil. He said, Messenger of Allah, if I'm the lowest in society, I can, nobody listens to me. Then what? The Messenger of Allah said, help a person who cannot help himself. Help a person who can't help himself. He said, oh Messenger of Allah, if I'm at that state, lowest, lowest in society, yeah, I don't have any profession, craftsman, and I can't help anybody else, then what? The Prophet ﷺ said, help a maghloom, help a mazloom, help an oppressed person. He said, oh Messenger of Allah, even if I can't help a, a mazloom person because I am the weakest in society, then what? I can't even help anybody. He said, then what? The Prophet ﷺ said, then do one final thing. Save your other brothers from your harm. Save others from your harm. This is so beautiful. If you can't contribute to society, then at least don't harm society. If you can't be productive for society, if you can't put anything back into community, if you can't put anything back into the Ummah, if you can't put anything back into your family, then at least save others from your own evil. The Messenger of Allah said, save other people from your evil and your harm. Just do that. And maybe Allah will grant you Jannah. Brothers, sisters, if you can't give to society, and you can't give to community, you can't help, at least for Allah's sake. If you can't be positive contributor, don't be a negative one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this ummah and this nation from the khaira ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to contribute to our communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya. And reunite us in Jannah for those. Barakallah feekum, Zakum, Allah khayyam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.